What? Yeah, if I'm worried about induction and you come and say, well, well, I give you inductive reasoning to justify it. I was going to start with, why should I get up in this as a way? So it's a problem. But then, it seems that we have no way out. I mean, we cannot justify by inductive reasoning and we cannot justify by inductive reasoning. So what's left? But let's see, so that's basically what Hume says, but let's see why we cannot justify induction by inductive reasoning. Let's see for a moment. Here are some examples of attempts to justify. We say induction worked in the past, thus it's going to work in the future. The problem is that we use inductive reference. Who tells us that the future will be like the past? This is an inductive reasoning. There are cases in which the future is not like the past, definitely not in the relevant senses. So it doesn't seem, I mean, that the fact that it was like that doesn't seem to justify unless we use induction. Another way is to say induction. Ah, induction worked in the past. We can say it's likely to work in the future. So we use something we can. But this still doesn't work, and it's used inductive reasoning because likely is based on inductive reasoning. Probability, we judge probability by experience. I don't know what is probable and what is not if I don't have experience. I don't know if it's probable, if I just came to this world without any experience and any knowledge, I wouldn't know that it's probable that it's snow if the temperature is below zero. And it's improbable if it's 10 degrees. Why should I? There is no logical connection between snow and, 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 and cold weather. I mean, it's not. So, so again, it's a problem. Another attempt that we, you will hear, one can say, nature is uniform. So meaning the past will be the, like, does the future will resemble the past? The problem here is that nature is uniform, is inductive reasoning, is inductive assumption that is used on inductive reasoning, and it's also an assumption that is very ambiguous. So what if nature is uniform? I mean, and, and what if the future is similar to the past? Everything is similar to everything else. And everything is unsimilar to. The question is similar in what sense? And that's inductive reasoning. To know what kind of similarity are, are useful and what is not, it's based on inductive reasoning. We don't know, I mean, without experience. Yeah, you can, but I mean, then, I mean, is it a good reasoning, a good justification? I say, you know, I've always been right. You ask me why, I said, because by definition, I'm always right. I mean, that would be this kind of bad hope. I mean, would it kind of be acceptable? I mean, it's not serious. We want explanation. And the problem is that all these explanations will rely on instruction. So, to cut a long story short, this is the structure of Hume's argument that it's impossible to justify induction by reason. All reasoning are either deductive or inductive. Inductive reasoning cannot be justified by inductive reasoning, he said. Inductive justification of inductive reasoning is either singular or lead to infinite regress. And this means that it's bad, or it's not considered strong. Thus, there is no way to justify induction by reason. It's not basically telling us that, or we thought, like the car, that we can justify our knowledge. Hume says it's impossible. You do as many meditation as you like, it's not going to hurt you. Because, I mean, reason is not going to help you because there is no way to properly
usually justify induction by reason. Because you cannot, you can do it neither by deductive reasoning nor by that. Okay? So it means that our reliance on induction is not due to reason. That the basic, that the idea of like uh, trying to have these foundations that would warrant everything like the card was, according to Jung, is in a sense impossible. Now, it's important to understand the problem is not that inductive reasoning may not be successful. This is part of the nature of inductive reasoning. We are not worried about it. What we are worried is that when we have inductive reasoning that we think that is successful, that we think that is good, we want to have an explanation, a justification why it is. And what you shows that so the fact that Inductive reasoning can yield false conclusion is part of the nature of inductive reasoning, even Google. That's not, it's not inductive reasoning. We, do, we are not trying to make inductive reasoning deductible. We are trying to justify inductive reasoning as it is. Okay. Uh, so inductive reasoning should not be deemed unjustified just because it doesn't live up to the standard of deductive reasoning. The problem is that Although induction is so central to our knowledge, it's everything that we learn from experience is based on induction in a sense, in one way or another, uh, it seems. It seems impossible to justify it by reason. That's the problem. And as a matter of fact, it's a problem that many still think is not it's not a solution. What we will try to start now and continue next week is to see your skeptical solution. Skeptical solution is a solution that one might not be totally happy with, but it's still a solution. But anyway, you doesn't explain why it's a skeptical solution. We will try to understand, but he call it skeptical solution. That's the name of the section. Uh, I think that it's worth looking at you. Many think that your solution is not convincing. They think that you raise a wonderful, important problem. Wonderful, maybe not, but I mean, very, very important problem. But they don't like so much this solution. But I think that a lot of those who think that it's not a good solution interpret it wrongly. I think it's a very strong solution. So I'll try to explain. In order to understand what human solution is, we have to understand human nature, especially the nature of the mind. What is the basis for induction? And Hume says that the basis for induction is ideas about causation, that one thing causes another. One thing is relevant to another. So it talks about uh, three relations. One, Causation, the other one is relevance, and another one, never mind now. Um, and these are basis, basic relations of the mind that are important for induction. They are the basis of all inductive reasoning. So let's see the relationship between causality and induction. Hume says, all reasoning concerning mental effect, meaning all reasoning about the external world, seem to be founded on the relation of cause and effect. By means of that relation alone, we can go beyond the evidence of our memory and senses. So by means of the relationship between cause and effect, we jump from the premises to the conclusion. All reasoning concerning facts are of the same nature. It is constantly supposed that this is a that there is a connection between the present and that which you infer from it. We assume that the sun was, is rising every day. We conclude from that that it's going to rise tomorrow. And Hume, and, and Hume says that this is based on causality. That the fact that it rises today is a cause 
to rise to power. Well, there is nothing to bind them together. The inference would be entirely precarious. Hume says that things that are not logically connection, connected, they are connected by the idea of causality. If one thing doesn't follow from another, it follows because we have an idea that one is a cause and the other one is the effect. Or one is, one is relevant to the other. We would not be able to relate heat to flame and collision of both to different direction, for instance. We relate them because we think that one is a cause of the other. We have an idea that when balls are colliding, then this causes them to deflect. We have the idea that when we have a flame, uh, when we have heat, uh, we have flame. And we have an idea that when we have very high heat, we have pain, for instance. And so on. So if we touch the stove, it's painful. There is no a priori reasoning. Someone who comes with no beliefs whatsoever would not have any idea why these two things are connected. According to you. But causes and effects are discoverable not by reason, by experience. You don't discover that it's not a good idea to touch the stove when it's on, just by reasoning, by a priori reasoning. You, you walk with the mind that tells you that this is the case. You do it once or twice, or other people do it, and you learn that it's not a good idea. Uh, so this is based on experience. The learning of what causes what is due to experience. by induction that you use them for the deduction. You wouldn't be able I mean, to know them without I mean, any experience.
So in short, inductive inferences are always based on ideas of cause and effect, ID, uh, ideas of necessary connection between things. And the fundamental source of these ideas is experience rather than reason, as it understood by Descartes. So the basis of, re of reason is not to try to do the meditation. It's an automatic operation of the, the mind. Is that we have a certain biology, and there is a certain experience, and we and our mind is wired by this. This is the basis. You know that to have reason, you have this experience first. And this experience is not that we think about this is a good experience. Let's have you know ideas of necessary connection. First, we have these ideas of necessary connection, and then we start to think whether it's good or not. But it's too late. <laughs> we have it already. Okay. So we continue next time. The reading for next time is Popper, which is also related to you. So we continue with this and we talk about Popper.